So as you know, I'm about sharing resources, developing um, bits and pieces to help people to uh, perform their own experiments. Uh, and as part of that, then I have um, really a circle of friends and, and we work together. So we, we talk a lot with each other, we email, we uh, discuss points that are actually of interest. And this next video is actually provided um, to me by a good friend of mine, uh, Simon. And Simon is um, working on um, battery cells and he does some really great work. But he doesn't really have time to um, get down there and show how to do these things. But he was um, talking to me about some of the latest stuff that he's been doing and was saying, listen Simon, this is really good stuff, mate. Do you mind if I do a video on it so that you guys out there have got this information available um, to use and, and to experiment with? And Simon says, hey Luton, no, no problem at all, you know, that's what we're about, mate, and get on with it. You do the video, send me the link, love to see it. So, um, this really is Simon's process. and. Um, when I was looking at it and thinking about it, I thought, actually, this guy's onto something. This is really quite cool. So, um, with Simon's permission, I'm sharing this with you. So, let's get on with it, and you can have a look and a see what you think. Thanks for watching. Hi. So, I'm always looking for um, new materials, obviously, and we're looking for a manganese dioxide base material for batteries and supercapacitors. And a friend of mine off the internet sent me this uh, because he's had good results with it and he said give it a go, it works really well, so I thought I'd give it a go. So what I've got in the conical flask there on the stirrer is 160 millilitres of 1, milliliter, uh, 1 milligram per millilitre concentration graphene oxide. And in a minute I'll set it stirring um, with a stir bar. Next to it is a solution of potassium permanganate. Now that's uh, 1.5 grams in 20 millilitres of water. Uh, sorry, 40 millilitres of water. When you get that stirring, and it'll be noisy obviously because the stirrer is running, then you put that in dropwise and just let it mix up. And that's what we're going to do next. Now, after you've done that, you need to prepare a second solution. And the second solution is a, a mixture of manganese sulphate and zinc sulphate. Now, in in order to do this, you need to measure out 0.3 grams of the zinc sulphate and um, 4 grams of the manganese sulphate. And you mix those in uh, 80 millilitres of water until they're properly mixed. And then when they're properly mixed, you add them with a pipette dropwise to the central well of the stirring solution and leave it to stir. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, so that's it stirring away. You'll notice I put it in a conical flask, and you can see the reason why. The uh, potassium permanganate is getting chucked everywhere. If I put this in a beaker, it'd be throwing permanganate at the log of the place. Now, permanganate's then just in down if you get it on it. It's a powerful oxidizer, and it's getting absolutely everywhere as a nightmare. So, conical flask and a little bit of a stopper really helps. And here's my uh, manganese sulfate and zinc sulfate. It's got that nice pinkish colour. I've been swirling that around for about five minutes or so uh, just to get it dissolved. And now what I'm going to do is um, pipette it in there using that uh, pipette and just put it in, in um, gentle drops. Apparently the reaction is almost immediate. Now I'm obviously having to hold this, so let's see if we can arrange it so you can see the reaction. That seems to work. Okay, let's pipette some of this stuff in. Now he says a few drops at a time. Now I've obviously got about 80 millilitres of that to add and a few drops of the dry and what time watching that is going to be like watching paint dry. So I'm, I'm going to um, carry on and do it. And yes, you can see it's kind of gone a brown colour from the purple colour already. So that is actually pretty damn quick. So I'm going to turn this off, add the rest of it and then get back to you. Okay, I left that stirring for about an hour and as you can see it's got this kind of um, deep brown colour to it. And it's quite iridescent actually. And you can see what's splashed up the sides there. It's a nice deep brown, so the next stage is to um, filter this and get the product out of there.
Okay, so I stirred that for an hour and then I left it sitting around for an hour. And as you can see, it separated out. We've got a nice clear solution at the top and a kind of brownish black at the bottom. And that brownish black is what we want. Interestingly, the solution has gone clear because that means all the potassium permanganate that was in there has been um, changed. Now, the thing to do is obviously to clean it, but because it's separating out like this, we can use the old um, fill it up with lots of fresh water and um, clean it that way, or we can filter it and give it a wash. But that's what we're after. Now, my friend tells me that if you mix that with 3% um, by weight of graphite, it makes a very good ink. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to wash that and mix it with 3% by weight. And there is the filtered product. So I decided to do a vacuum filter mine. And as you can see, it's a nice sort of deep brown black colour. And that's manganese dioxide with um, graphene oxide and a tiny smidging of zinc in it. So let's dry it, add 3% by weight of graphene and try it as an ink. <laughs> So there it is, that's the um, active um, cathode material and Simon tells me he uses um, powdered zinc, 400 mesh as the anode and all he does really is glue it onto some graphite foil uh, using PVA, a 5% PVA mix. He also recommends mixing in 3% of graphite with this to uh, make it slightly more conductive and says that if there's more than 3% you really don't get much of an improvement on it. Uh, and then between those two, he's using a separator of um, fine glass fibre. Um, so that would make a particularly good cell. Uh, now he's reporting quite good things out of that from what he's doing. And um, give it a go and see what happens and see what you can make of it. Anyway, thank you very much, Simon. And I hope you all enjoyed that. Oh, on a side note, he tells me that um, he's planning at some stage or other to put all of this stuff up on a website. So when he does, I'll obviously link to that website and let you guys know about it. But um, again, thanks for sharing.